Greetings to all viewers. This is Professor Ankit Singh and this is my first lecture from my lecture series on Transportation Engineering 1. We will start with the first module Highway Planning and Development Highway Alignment and Surveys. Before moving ahead, let us define the term transportation. In general, transportation can be defined as the movement of an object or a person from one point to another. Now there are various modes of transportation that we will be dealing with later on. Firstly, let us consider and discuss the importance of transportation. Why do we need transportation or how it affects our society? First point, transport and economic growth. Key infrastructure of a country. Country's economic status depends upon roads, railways, airports and shipping. Rate at which a country's economy grows is very closely linked to the rate at which the transport sector grows. This is obvious that for any country as the transport sector grows, as we connect distant areas or distant villages villages which are not yet developed provide them with good transport facilities like roads railways etc then this leads to economic growth because uh, then there are developments in the industries they get connected to marketplaces and hence there is economic growth for the country the second point is place and time utility of goods in any country, the natural resources are not evenly located. For example, vegetables, fruits, petroleum products and necessary items. Now these items that we have mentioned may not be equally distributed or produced in the country. There, are, there may be some spots or some areas where there is high vegetable production, high fruit production or extraction of pro petroleum products etc. With the help of transportation, what we do is we can transport these materials to places where there is scarcity of these items. So this is how transport helps here. Transport gives place utility to the goods. Transport minimizes the time for the movement of people and goods. Next, transport overcomes the separation between the producer and the consumer and preservation of quality of goods. The production of goods and their consumption do not always take place at the same place. Okay, So the production of goods and the consumption may not be taking place at the same areas. Okay, Hence we need transportation to transfer the goods from one place to another. Certain goods like vegetables, fruits, milk and fish are perishable. Means they get exhausted with time. Hence, we need to quickly transport them from one point to another. They have to be quickly moved from the production centers to the consumers. Hence, requirement of efficient and fast transport system is required in these areas. Okay, Transport, urbanization and industrial development. Rapid urbanization can take place only if a country has a good transport network. Industrial activity depends on a good system of transport for moving the raw materials and finished products. Okay, so industry for industrial activities, we need good transport system to move in the raw materials into the industry and to take out the finished goods or products from the industry and supply to the markets. Next, cost of goods. A major component of the cost of goods is the transport cost. A good transport system results in lower transport costs and thus a lower cost of goods. If there is an efficient transport system in our, in our country, then this would affect the cost of goods. The cost of goods would be less. Okay, Since time is money, if the transport is good and speedy, then it could save money. Okay, Hence, we could get the finished products for a lower cost. Defense and Tourism for the defense and strategic needs of the country, an efficient transport system or network is vital. 
okay for defense purposes we need roads and railways for hauling or carrying their equipments to the required site both domestic and international tourism can prosper only if the country has a good transport system okay for domestic tourism there is requirement of roadways railways and also and also airways for uh, far away tourism okay if the tourist spots are at places where there is no connectivity using roads or railways or for better comfort then we use airways here and for international tourism uh, we either go for waterways using ships or airways next let us discuss the modes of transportation okay basically there are three media through which we can transport or move from one point to another which is land water and air okay so on land we have transport systems such as road and railways on water we have ships and boats on or through air we have aeroplanes and helicopters let us discuss each of these transport modes first roadways or highways the only mode which could give maximum service to one and all this gives the maximum service since it is broadly spread into our country okay each and every point in our country can be joined using roads okay so in our country especially it is the most wide spread means of transport it serves as a feeder system now what do we mean by a feeder system here a feeder system is a transport medium through which we get connected to other transport mediums for example if you if you need to travel by an aeroplane okay so you will need to go there using highways hence the highways is a connecting medium to the airport and your home okay so it acts as a feeder system maximum flexibility with respect to route direction time and speed of travel okay here by flexibility we mean that the route can be changed at times okay for example if you are traveling on a highway and you wish to take a u turn or you wish to take left or right okay or change lanes even so you have flexibility over there okay no that is for direction for route uh, we can choose our own routes okay if we need to travel from a to b then there may be a number of routes which we can choose okay we always try to choose the most efficient one time okay so we have we can travel late we can be late it's not like we always need need to be at time okay if you are using roadways okay you could be late but in the case of railways or airport uh, air travel or even waterways you need to be on time okay and speed of travel the speed of travel is flexible it is variable it depends on the personal who is using the roadways okay possible to provide door to door service so roads connect our houses door to door okay the only transport medium which connects us from our home to any other major station or terminal is highways the other three modes depends on roads for the service to and from their respective terminals harbors or stations okay so all these stations or terminals are connected to our homes through highways or roads it provides independent facility for road travel by a well planned network of roads throughout the country okay the next mode of transport is railways it is advantages for both passengers and goods particularly for long distances okay if you wish to travel for long distances then railways is better in comparison with roadways okay both with uh, consideration to comfort and economy okay it serves as arteries for transportation by land okay it connects long routes okay so they act as arteries the energy required to haul 
a unit load by a unit distance by the railway is only a fraction of that required by road okay we need to understand this statement this stated statement means that for a particular distance the energy required to travel is less for railways as compared with roadways okay the transportation of bulk goods is advantages along land where rail facilities are available okay bulk goods or heavy cargo can be transported easily and efficiently using railways next type of mode is airways it is the fastest among all the four modes it provides more comfort as compared to any other mode saving in transportation time for the passengers and goods between the airports now all these three are the advantages of airways uh, the major disadvantage here is that the airports are not located nearby your houses so you need to go to the airport first and the other disadvantage is the cost the next type of mode is waterways it is slowest among the four modes okay among all these modes the slowest mode to travel from point a to point b would be waterways it needs minimum energy to haul unit load through unit distance okay but here the energy used is least as compared to any other mode you need to understand that by energy here what we are trying to understand is the use of fuel okay so the least fuel usage would be in waterways possible where inland transportation facilities are available okay so waterways is only possible if there is a sorry traveling through waterways is only possible if there is a water connectivity between any two points okay so there needs to be a water stream with minimum depth required okay next let us compare all the four modes okay based on different criteria first criteria is relative speed okay relative speed is highest for the airways and is the slowest for waterways and roadways and railways are moderate safety with respect to safety the most unsafe mode of transport would be roadways okay and compar comparatively railways is safer and waterways and airways are safer in comparison to both roadways and railways okay here you need to understand is although if there is a air crash okay or any kind of accident with the ship then at that time there may be a lot of lives may be lost okay there are chances that uh, if there's a air crash then about 100 passengers might face uh, fatal accidents but what we are trying to consider here is the overall volume of fatalities okay so if you consider the overall fatality rate then roadways would cause the maximum number of fatal fatalities or deaths per year okay next is flexibility flexibility as we were discussed earlier with respect to speed direction time and distance okay so uh, we maximum flexibility we would get from roadways minimum from railways and waterways since in railways we can't change the direction the timings can't be changed okay the volume can't be changed and there is medium flexibility with airways because in emergency conditions there are chances that we may change the direction if required okay next condition is comfort condition so the we get the maximum comfort for airways and for lesser distance travel through land roadways are comfortable for longer distance travels then railways are comfortable okay here waterways the comfort condition is debatable since it depends on the luxury or class of the ship or port next is cost 
the most costly would be airways and the least costly would be waterways okay and when you compare roadways and railways for long distances railways would be less costly and roadways would be costlier than railways okay next is fuel consumption it would also be the same actually so airways would consume maximum fuel followed by roadways railways and least fuel consumption for waterways network okay so network there is a fixed network for railways okay the rails are already laid and the uh, wagons need to travel through that fixed network for waterways there is a restricted network and airways also there is a limited network but extensive network we provide for roadways it is the most sp spread transportation mode so we have many options to travel over here okay next is capacity or people or goods carrying capacity okay high capacity for ships and railways and less capacities for roadways and airways okay ships have the highest carrying capacity for goods okay the next point is or the next topic to be discussed is characteristics of road transport roads are used by various types of road vehicles like cars buses trucks two and three wheelers cycles and animal drawn vehicles okay so there are different classes of vehicles that are using the road road transport requires a relatively small investment for the government as compared to other modes of transport okay so every individual if not every individual most of the citizens of a country can afford some or other mode of travel when he is using the roadways okay so motor vehicles are cheaper than other carriers like rail ships boat and aeroplane construction and maintenance of roads is also cheaper than that of railway tracks harbors and airports okay we would deal with the construction part later on road transport offers a complete freedom to road users to transfer the vehicle from one lane to another and from one road to another depending on the need and convenience okay as we discussed earlier the road transport is pretty much flexible for short distance travel road transport saves time speed of movement is directly related with the severity of the accident road transport is subjected to a high degree of accidents due to flexibility of movements offered to the road accidents now since we know the flexibility is more for road accidents hence people try to change directions okay and they try to take u turn and there is speed flexibility okay so there are more chances of accidents for roadways road transport is the only means of transport that offers itself to the whole community alike okay so all of the community may it be the lower class the middle class or the upper class everyone can use road transport personalized travel can be satisfied by the use of private vehicles in road transport such a travel can fulfill personal pleasures freedom from schedules and gives more comfort okay so personalized travel is possible here road transport is one of the major contributor for environmental pollution okay so this is a disadvantage of road transport air and noise pollution loss of aesthetics ribbon development are some of the ill effects of road transport okay what is ribbon development ribbon development is the development of areas along the roads okay so let us discuss the advantages and disadvantages of road transport A wide geographical coverage provided by roads okay as discussed earlier the roads are spread all over the country so there is a wide geographical coverage low capital investment okay roads can be constructed at comparatively lower initial cost than railways 
the cost varies with specifications but even the best road is cheaper than a railway line okay the cost may vary with the specifications since there are different types of roads which would we would learn later on but even the best type of road if used is still cheaper than a railway line okay stage construction is feasible for roads but not for railways okay so stage construction is also feasible in the case of roads uh, we would learn later on that there are different layers in roads okay so the road can be open to traffic even after construction of a few layers and not only after completion of the whole road okay this we learn later on quick and assured deliveries road transport offers quick and assured deliveries time is a great value for a wide range of articles including both perishable and high valued manufactured products okay so since the roadways provide economic travel and quick travel and they also give door to door service hence we get quick and assured deliveries okay flexibility there is a high flexibility we know about this door to door service it offers door to door service already discussed employment potential okay since there is a huge network and there is always construction and maintenance practices going on hence roadways are always provide employment potential personalized travel okay we can use our own personal vehicles to travel using roadways short hauls or traveling for short distances okay for short hauls road transport is the only economical means as compared to any other mode for short distance travel roadways is the best type of traveling mode okay safety is a serious disadvantage okay environmental pollution is also a disadvantage since road transport is the main cause of environmental pollution causing both noise and air pollution okay and parking problem okay this is also a, a disadvantage road transport has caused parking problem in the city streets okay since the number of vehicles on the roads is increasing drastically due to the increase in population there is always a parking problem in hand okay energy road transport consumes greater energy per passenger per kilometer okay so these four are the disadvantages and the rest of them are advantages okay we shall discuss the road development plans okay and what is jaker committee and its recommendations in a, in my next lecture thank you